All right, so it's here, all the way from Paramount, California. My fiddle, 23 inch violin that I purchased on eBay. And so what we're gonna do is open it up and we're gonna set it up so you can play it very well. This is very exciting. I just got back from a trip to Tennessee and there it was on the stoop when I showed up. So we'll get out our handy car keys, break into this thing, and see what we have. Okay, so first of all, we see we have the case here. On the front, there's a little tag. It says 4-4 violin. It's a pretty nice case, has a uh, zipper top where I can put my packs of strings and we'll talk about strings later. But let's get right down to the chase here. We're going to open it up and it's a fairly decent case. Looks like it has it's zippered. And there is a fiddle in there. The fiddle comes with a bow as advertised. Oh, it's a little bit stuck. It's in a plastic case. So there's the bow. <coughs> Looks nice and then we'll velcro this out and there's the fiddle. It has the strings wrapped around the fingerboard. I'm going to show you how to get those out and put it together. It has the bridge and a little piece of paper. Okay. Has a piece of carpet in there to keep the fine tuners from scratching up that beautiful wood. The sound post is upright. So let's talk about some of the parts of the fiddle real quick. We have um, the chin wrist where we're going to put our chin. Okay. This is called the tail piece, and on this tail piece are four fine tuners. One, two, three, four. And these fine tuners are we're going to use to fine tune the fiddle after we tune it most of the way using these peg tuners, these four peg tuners up here. Top of the fiddle is called the head of the fiddle. There's the scroll that comes around. And of course, here's the neck, the fingerboard, the strings, and the body. These are called the F holes right there. And it's two Fs, F, F hole. The back of the fiddle is pretty good. It's brand new. It's a beautiful little instrument. So I'm excited about it. And it's time to start putting it together. So um, let me switch to a better camera view. Okay, hopefully this is a better view so that you can see everything that we're using here. And so here's my fiddle. And I think I was going through some of the parts of it. I guess I could continue that. The tail piece goes around and it loops in here into the end pin. And the end pin is secured in the body of the fiddle. Now the end pin is not glued in. It'll come right out if I pull on it good enough. Um, if you can see down in, the, um, down in the F hole right there, there's a little post sticking up. And that post is the sound post and it transmits the vibrations from the bridge to the back of the fiddle makes the back of the fiddle vibrate and push the sounds back out the F holes. And so that's how sound gets transmitted um, to the fiddle back that then becomes the resonator to push the sound out. And so I need you to be very careful here because without strings putting pressure downward on the sound post, which is not glued in, it could actually fall over and then, oh my, that would take a long time to get it to stand back up. So um, so we're going to be careful not to tilt it too much or to bump it until we get the strings down. Up here the pegs, they're not glued in, they're movable. And the strings are already put into the pegs for us. Okay, But if they weren't, what we would do is to just push the end of the string into a little hole that's in the peg and then begin to turn it to tighten it. And so to turn the tune the pegs, you always turn it this way. And on the other side, it goes the same way. It turns up and over. Okay? That's the way the pegs turn. And the way they're put in there, 
the E string is going to this peg one. It's the first peg on the on the right side of the fiddle. And that's an E string right there. This is the smallest string. The next string over is the A string. It's going to this peg. And now the next biggest string is called the D string. It's the third string from the E. And it goes to this peg. And then last of all, the G string. It's the largest string. Goes to this peg on the lower left. Okay, And it just threads into the tiny hole that's in there. And then you turn it around a few times. Here on this end, you can't really see it, but the um, let me pull out one of these spring, strings so you can see what's going on with it. Uh, I'll loosen it up here at the top. See me loosening it? That's loosening the string. And now it pulls out here at the end, and you can see it's just a um, a little cylinder of some type with a string wrapped around it. And so there's the little fine tuner right there. I just put the cylinder in there so that it slips right in, right in there, and then when I bring it, bring it back, you see it catches. It's hard to do that when I'm holding it in front of the camera. There it goes. So I'll insert it in there, and then when I bring it back, it catches just like that. And now I can make it taut again by turning it this way. Okay. But I don't want to make it too taut. Let me bring these up front of the front of the fingerboard. There are my four strings. I don't want to make it very taut yet because I don't have the bridge in it. Now, I showed you that it came with a little bridge wrapped in paper. So let's take that out. And there it is, there's our bridge. It's a cute little thing. Now you see it's not symmetrical. If I hold it up there, you can see that this side, if you just look at the dimensions from here to there, this side is shorter than the, than the dimensions here on this other side. This is the high side and it's where the G string will go. Okay. So I'm going to turn this so that when I Put it, I'm going to lay it down there under the strings, just like that, and I want to turn it so that the high side, the long side here, is going to be under the G string, or the largest string. Okay, And then I'm just going to set it there, and I'm going to turn it upright, just like this. And there it is, now my, my bridge is standing up. There are still some adjustments that I need to make. And let me show you what those are. Now first of all, I want the strings to be even spacing. Right now you see it's very uneven spacing. And so I'll put my G and my E about that far from the end and move my D and the A out and see that space a little more evenly, okay? And some trial and error will get it just right. So about like that is the way it should look. And then I want to center this. Do you see in the middle of the F hole there are some little um, tabs there, some little cutouts. And so what I want to do is move this so the feet of my bridge are centered between the two F holes. And not only is it centered between the two F holes, but it's in line with those two little tabs on the inside of the F hole. So it's kind of in line there. Then if you look back through to where you can see the foot this should be a little bit ahead of the sound post. So can you see the sound post in there? See how the bridge is a little bit in front of it. The bridge is a little bit in front of the sound post. That's the way it should be. It's leaning back a bit so I want to straighten it just a hair. Now it's standing up straight and there it is. I'll tighten this just a little bit just enough to where I get a tone out of each string. I didn't make it tight because I don't want to break the strings, okay? Now let's take a look at the bridge again. And the facing spacing seems about right. I've got plenty of room on the ends where the string's not going to fall off. And when I play it up here, you see I've got pretty much equal distance 
on the fingerboard, from right here at what's called the nut, see this spacing of the E string all the way down? You want it to you want to make sure that it's pretty much equal spacing all the way down through there. Same with all the way down through there. Same with the G string. From here on the nut, all the way down, it's about equal spacing. Okay, and then between those, I've got equal spacing between all of my strings there. I just eyeballed it. You can measure it. Okay, you can get it as you know close to equal as you want. Some people like the spacings to be a little different. Some people like the spacings to be a little further apart between the A and the E, or between the G and the D. But just starting out, you want to pretty much get it equal spacing. All right, so um, it's set up. The next part is tuning the fiddle. And so we'll make that a new video. So we, it's all set up now, ready to tune.